So a few months ago, at a little music store in Memphis, I picked up a Fender Princeton Chorus 120 watt amplifier for about 120, 130 bucks, something like that. And uh, found that I was actually able to get a really good metal tone out of this amp uh, in conjunction with a little $30 Tube Screamer clone that I found on Amazon. So, before I explain everything here and all the rationale, here's what that sounds like playing a cover of Headspace by Velvet Revolver. I will note that the cover was recorded in drop C sharp instead of drop D, so it does certainly sound a little heavier, um, but again, most of the tones are just the uh, pedal and of course the amp. So, here's how that sounds. So, my dad actually has a Fender Princeton Chorus, basically this exact same amp, except his is the red knob. His was an earlier version. I think this was like a later, like, 90s reissue, something like that. And uh, he had a Fender Strat as well, and he plugged into that amp and had a great clean tone, a great blues tone. It was so good. It was very clean. Um, my brother, my older brother, uh, played on it. He used the amp a lot, and you know we were a fan of Digitech pedals, so he'd get a, a metal pedal and stick it in the front end, and they were just awesome, like drop C tuning, just riffing, Godsmack, things like that. It was a really good amp for it. It took pedals really well. So I was at a little music store in Memphis. I saw this amp for, no joke, about 120, 130 bucks and it sounded just like I remembered, so I picked one up, brought it back with me, sat down, played it, beautiful sounding. The chorus on this amp, along with the reverb on this amp, like an actual spring, I think there's an actual spring in here for the reverb, it just sounds beautiful, it is so good. Now, some people say the overdrive section is lacking, I think the overdrive section does what it needs to, this is not a metal amplifier, this is a bluesy rock amplifier. So the gain does exact the uh, overdrive does exactly what it needs to do, but I was able to make it do a little bit more. So uh, I was on Amazon and I picked up this Musky Mini Tube Overdrive pedal. It's like a Mini Tube Screamer clone. It was about thirty bucks, and I didn't want anything like crazy. I have a I have a Digitech metal distortion pedal here from their hardwire branding and I mean it sounds good it's a it's a solid pedal but the I wanted to go for like a tube screamer kind of thing just get that pushed overdrive tone rather than a, a full-on distortion and I was really impressed A with this little pedal on its own just this pedal into a clean channel it sounds great um, but the money maker was in conjunction with the overdrive on here. So I'll zoom in closer and I'll show you the settings that I'm using for this here. And then we'll go into FL Studio and I'll show you what I'm doing in the mix. So I'm gonna to switch to more of a uh, handheld view here just so I can show everything a little better. Uh, so what I'll do is, uh, this is a, a, a two speaker amplifier and I just have uh, two microphones, an SM57 and an SM7B, which I actually bought to do vocals, but it works really well as a, as a guitar uh, mic, as an amp mic. So we'll see if it shows through. So there's the first speaker cone there. I just have everything going to the second one. And uh, if you can see from here, I actually have the SM57 uh, pointed uh, directly at the center of the cone, and then the SM7B is more off-center, and that's really getting a lot of the good low-end. I found um, 
And if you're wondering why it's uh, set up in this uh, janky manner, it's because um, I don't have another mic stand. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly why it's set up like this. I'll probably end up getting another mic stand so I can do uh, some more refined miking. I'd like to, you know, have a mic over here and a mic over here um, just to make things a little cleaner. But uh, as you can see, there's uh, nothing too clean about this setup. So, uh, important things here. Let's see if I can focus. Uh, of course, that's clean volume. Not important. I'm just doing all this in mono. Uh, treble about seven and a half to eight. Uh, let's see if I can focus that a little better. There we go. You can also see a little red dot right there because uh, the sensor on this got a little uh, bugged. So unfortunately, I have a little red dot sight on my camera. Anyway, treble is about seven and a half. Mid is about six. Bass is about four and a half. I found this is a kind of a dark sounding amp, at least with uh, with the guitars that I'm using. So I try to brighten it up a little bit. Um, I have the reverb turned off right now, but sounds beautiful, especially for leads. Uh, gain. So I guess, of course, I do have the gain channel active. Um, the mid boost is turned on, again, because it's a little dark sounding without it. Uh, kind of bassy, but, you know, it may just be your cup of tea. Kind of sludgy. Uh, like I said, gain seven, seven and a half. Uh, I do have the limiter set to about a 3, if you can see that here. Uh, and that's just to kind of uh, tame the gain a little bit. Um, presence, it's basically maxed. Just I just max it out. Uh, volume, actually, if you set it at 1, you can shatter glass. So, <laughs> for the purposes of recording, I do have it uh, turned down to a more reasonable level for an apartment. And uh, then the only other thing I have, you'll see I do have... A tuner over there. This is actually a Donner uh, tuner, about 20-30 bucks. And I do have a uh, Digitech uh, TL2, which is not actually being used right now. I have it plugged up just in case. But the only thing I was running through is just this uh, uh, Mosky uh, Mini Screamer clone. Uh, as you can see here, the drive is uh, basically off. Levels maxed out, and then tone is about three-quarter. Uh, your typical uh, overdrive boost uh, although I found that if you uh, if you give it a little bit of drive a little bit of extra juice then um, you can uh, you can scream pretty well that's good for a lead tone but for general rhythm tones this works beautifully with uh, the settings on the amp so that's enough of this setup here let's go within uh, into FL studio and I will show you the uh, the mix that I'm using as well okay so Here's the project that I have up. Uh, I have two rhythm tracks and then just one little lead track. Uh, hard left, hard right, so 100%, 100%. Um, the bass is actually programmed because uh, my actual bass is on loan right now. Uh, but I was still able to get a pretty good uh, or a passable bass tone for the purposes of uh, just demonstrating the amp and then the drums. So let's talk about the unimportant stuff first and then we'll move into the uh, the fun stuff. So like I said earlier, the bass is uh, programmed. I'm just using the Boo Bass in FL Studio, which, I mean, if you listen to it, it doesn't sound stellar uh, on its own, but I was able to get some pretty, uh, I'm gonna say some solid uh, bass tones out of it. Yes, to get hammer-on sounds or bend sound, I did program slides in there to get a uh, more realistic uh, bass uh, sound. I've got that running into a channel with a uh, pretty severe uh, cut to the high end, uh, just a low pass at about, oh, what is that, about 1700 hertz. And uh, I'm running that through bias effects. Uh, and I have a, a clean bass tone patch. I just threw a little uh, drive on there just to give it that grit. For the drums, I'm using the uh, Get Good P4 uh, Matt Halpern pack, and it just sounds killer. Just it just sounds so good. Um, 
the big thing, the only thing I really changed on this uh, from the default is the snare. I'm using the uh, Pearl Sensitone snare. Just because the others just have a little bit too much of a crack to them, and I wanted a snare that, that just hit. Uh, just a nice boomy snare. So the, uh, like I said, the Sensitone. Good amount of crack in there, but still a, a, a pretty strong hit compared to the Pearl Reference, which very poppy sounding, and uh, the the VK, the Vcast, kind of a mix of both, but I really love the uh, the Sensitone on there. I have Kick, Snare, Tom, Cymbals, Overhead, Room, and individual tracks, and all that leads to a main bus uh, with a little compressor on there, um, just to kind of control the snare. And just for giggles, literally just for giggles, I have it also routed to uh, a track with Sound Goodizer, uh, just to add a little extra oomph to the snare and kick, and uh, Convolver for a little reverb. And I'm going to mute myself, and I'll show you uh, what that sounds like. So as you can hear, massive sounding uh, drums, absolutely, I love it. So now the important thing, the meat of the matter, and that is the guitars. So like I said, I have three guitar tracks, hard left, hard right, and then a center track. Uh, you notice that this is set to a mono. Um, I have the SM57 and the SM7B. Um, so to prevent any odd panning, I just went ahead and just soloed the track. Um, in terms of EQ on the guitar tracks themselves, I don't have anything that's boosting. The only thing I have is a high pass at 59 hertz and a low pass at 15k, and that's just to kind of help with some of the fizziness on the uh, on the track. Um, I have that same EQ on the uh, the right side, and for the little lead section, I just didn't bother with uh, with it. Uh, little lead section needs to cut a little more, so I just left uh, left the top end uh, unaltered so it could uh, just kind of cut through a little extra. Uh, if I was doing a, a full uh, proper recording uh, for a song, then I may EQ that a little better just to uh, just to make sure everything sits properly. But I think uh, as the settings are, it works pretty well. I do have a little delay on the lead track. So here's what the uh, the guitars sound like uh, sound like soloed. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself. As you can hear, you know, definitely chunky. Sounds great. Um, the only other thing I have is on the master track. I have again very light compression, just to just to kind of tame some of the, the snare hits that, that fly off uh, and kind of bring uh, some of the quieter things up a little bit. And I do have an EQ. That is just boosting the uh, uh, the top end a little bit, just getting a little more shimmer, a little more uh, presence in there. It's like it just sounds a little brighter. Um, I think I mentioned earlier the, uh, the Princeton chorus is a little on the dark sounding side, uh, so adding a little extra top end definitely helps. So 
Just one more time, here is what that sounds like all together. Fifty-one and fifty, eat your heart out. <laughs> I kid, of course. I'd love a fifty-one and fifty. I'd love a sixty-five oh five. But I mean, you can't argue with that. That just sounds killer. And there you have it. So hopefully you like the sound of this amp as much as I do. I love how this sounds. And with this pedal, like in total, less than two hundred dollars, and I'm getting some damn good metal tone out of this amp. I think, unfortunately, if you go on Reverb, these amps are selling for like 200 or 250 So if you find one of these locally for less than $200, I strongly recommend getting it. And then just, just put a new, an overdrive pedal in here, a little tube screamer pedal. You'll be impressed, like, solid amp. But even for $250, $250 plus this pedal, less than $300, you're getting 120 watts, so that'll move some air. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. I love it to death. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, thank you very much. Uh, if you get one of these amps, and you have one of them, I recommend experimenting with it a little bit. Put some pedals in the front. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Bye!